Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad about it. Come on in the room, people of God. That is a word from the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. The Lord is so good. He is mighty. Come on, God. I love your word on today. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Myra. Good morning, Daniela. Good morning. Come on in the room, people of God. Good morning, Makeover Ministry family. Yes, God. Come on. That extra peace that leaves the pain. I want that love that'll never change. Give me that. Give me that. Woo! The power to walk away when another God wants to take your place. That's still every that that part of the song gets me every time. Woo! God, I love your word. That extra peace that'll leave the pain. I want that love that'll never change. Give me that. Woo! I need the power to walk away. You got to have the power to walk away. God, I love your word on today. Hallelujah. Come on in the room, people of God. My goodness. Lord, we, may, we pray that the Lord send the heat on the inside of you that warms you. Because he was with the three Hebrew boys and, and it was cold. It was hot, I'm sorry. It was hot and he had to send an internal temperature to keep him. So we pray that the Lord sends an internal temperature your way since it's cold where you are this morning. God, I love your word on today. Hallelujah. When I lived in Florida, I'm from Indiana. And when I lived in Florida for some time, I'm not used to no temperature feeling like 115 degrees. I, I I literally, first of all, I got delivered from hair weave down to my behind because it was too hot for five bundles of hair all the way down to your behind. So that was that that helped me. And then I got delivered from wearing waist trainers because that was it was too hot to wear a latex waist trainer because it was just too hot. And but I still after I took all that off, I still was hot and I literally had to pray and I had to say God adjust my temperature. If this is where you want me to be, I need you to adjust my temperature so that I can stay. Because this is, I don't want to be miserable every day. Oh, you have a cold. Okay. Lord, have mercy. Help us, Holy Ghost. Okay. Well, we definitely pray your strength. Because I'm, I'm still at it. I got a cough that just wants to be a, a friend that's not a friend. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is faithful. All right, people of God. Let's hop on in. Hey. There is a word from the Lord on today. It's good. It's good. It's good. We touch and agree with you, woman of God. Someone just asked for prayer. We touch and agree for you know what you need. And God knows what you need even more than what you know. And we touch and agree that the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory. My God. I love God and all his children. Give me that power. God, I just, I don't just want the appearance. I want that power. <laughs> come on. He said, if you tarry in Jerusalem, come on. If you tarry where the Lord is, God, I love your word on today. If you tarry, if you stay right there, you will be endued with power. <laughs> God, I love your word on today. Thank you, Lord. We got to have the power. Ain't no need of just having the pretty. Because if you only got the pretty, you're lacking something. My God, if you really have been in his presence, you come out with all power. <laughs> Woo, God, I love your word on today. That's how you know. My God, come on, that's how you know. God, I love your word. If you feel down and you get on the phone with somebody who's connected to the spirit of God, you feel power. God, I love your word. By the time you hang up, you feel like you can run on. I'm trying to tell you my testimony. I love God and all his children. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you that you're a good God, merciful, kind, all-knowing, and all-seeing, holy. 
holy, 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 holy. Thank you for new grace and new mercy. We ask that you touch us again. Touch our bodies again, God. For you're still healing. Touch our minds again, God, for you're still restoring. Touch our hearts again, God, for you're still regulating. You're still mending. You're still fixing. God, I love your word. You're still washing. Yee! You're still washing. Purifying, cleansing, removing the spot. You're still removing the wrinkles. Woo, God, I love your word on today. You're holy. You are holy. And you are righteous. You are the king of kings. You are. Woo, Jesus, glory. Woo, you are the king. Judah, God, I love your word on today. Thank you, Lord, the mighty lion. See, the devil, he roams around like a lion, but you are the mighty lion. Woo, Jesus, the tribe. It is city, I'm not a day, city, I'm not a day, city. Ye of Judah, glory. It is city, I'm not a day, city. Thank you, Lord, you're holy. You are holy. You are righteous. You are King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Mighty are the works of your hand. Woo, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name in this place. Hallelujah. 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 As I was praying, I saw a lion, big, beautiful lion standing there at the beginning, like as if it's like the jungles behind him. All the wild things are behind him. And he was standing there like, try me if you want to. Woo! <laughs> I love God. He was standing there like, you don't want this. Because in order to get to that, yeah, they said it on that. They said it. You got to go through me. Woo, Jesus. I pro when I tell you, I wish I could see the picture. I wish I could see it. I literally, he was standing there like, Come on. So I want you to know that the enemy cannot just get to you. God, I love your word while you're even in your wilderness season. The enemy cannot just run up on you. First, he has to go through. Yeah, they sit down. They sit down. Baby, when I seen the lion, the lion was not asleep. The lion was ready, alert. Hey, can't nothing get past me. God, I love your word on today. I love God and all his children. The word on today is put people in my path. Put people in my path. God, I love your word. He's good. Mighty are the works of his hands. Hallelujah. Mm. Put people Put people in my path. You know, here at the Makeover Ministry, I'm very transparent because I don't just want to tell you the pretty part. If I only tell you the pretty part and I only share the scripture, but I never share the experience. God, I love your word. If I only share, then, then when you go through, you'll feel like the hand of God is not on you. When you go through, you'll feel like that you're in sin or you miss God or something. God, I love your word. And when I tell you about two weeks ago, maybe three, two or three, somewhere in there, um, I was at a very wrecked place. Spiritually, um, I was at a very wrecked place in my emotions, in my heart. Um, and, and I didn't really know what to do. My marriage was on the rocks and I'm like, God, this just don't make no sense. You keep giving me all these messages about marriage and my marriage is sitting here falling apart, disintegrating and, 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 and it, it's just, I don't know what's going on. But God, I, even when I, I went back several times in my mind, you signed me up for this man. You put me in this position. You open my heart to this man. So, so, Lord, wait a minute. This is not making sense. God, I love your word on today. And so when I tell you 
I'm trying to tell you, you got to know how to stand in the storm. You have to know how to stand. It is city on that I they say in the storm. And so when I begin, so you got to consult God. You cannot just operate on your feelings and your flesh. I'm trying to tell you, because your flesh will tell you a lot of things and it's real. But I had to go back to God and I said, God, what is this? What is going on? And the Lord said, give me six months. Hey. During this season, during this time, a couple of weeks ago, I literally was on the verge, no kidding, of a nervous breakdown because it was so much. A tormenting spirit had overtaken me, depression, anxiety. Um, I was overwhelmed. God, I love your word on today. I'm trying to help somebody. So you ain't crazy. You're not out of the will of God uh, when these things happen to you. And so I thank, I thank God for it. It was rough, but let me tell you about God. Hey, when the Lord said, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and according to my glory. God, I love your word on today. Hey. I don't take no supplements for anxiety. I just go to God. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you. Let me help you in the spiritual. I, I, I'm honest and I'm transparent. I used to take medicine for anxiety, but I don't take medicine for anxiety no more. I learned, and, I'm, and if you got to, that's fine. But I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us because God has given us a solution. Sometimes the breaking is necessary. Yes, I know. See, that's the thing about a lot, the breaking. It is city on the day city. It's necessary to take. You cannot have breakthrough without breaking. Yeah. You cannot go to the next level without breakthrough. God, I love your word on today. And so I was breaking. But in that moment, the Lord sent help. I'm trying to help somebody on today. I'm literally in this place where my mind is frazzled. And I said, hey, God, I, this ain't, this is not looking like what it would hold up. My God, I'm, I'm losing it. When I tell you my phone rung and 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 and, and somebody called me and they said, Pastor, you on my mind, you on my heart. God show me, show me something's going on. Two hours we was on that phone and they ministered me back to help. I'm trying to tell somebody on today. When you are see, I said, God, how are you gonna have to carry me if you've given me the assignment to carry your people and you're telling me to teach my way through? You didn't tell me to go back and sit down. You didn't tell me to go back and have no seat. No, you, 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 you. So if that's, if you want me to stay going forward, you going to have to meet me in this thing. God, I love your word. When I tell you I was on the phone two hours and I felt my strength. See, you can't, when we, you can't call me and say, oh, it's going to be okay. No, that ain't it. You got to speak to my spirit. You have to speak, God, I love your word, to my spirit. Two hours I was on the phone, and by the time I hung up, my joy was renewed. My mind, it is city, I'm not at city, was at peace. I had direction, I had clarity, I had understanding. Hey. Mm, mm, mm. My God, come on. See, it's not, but you have to go through. Many of us are trying to avoid the go through. You have to actually be a partaker, allow yourself to be poured into. God, I love your word. Allow someone to pour into you, meet you in that moment of, I'm on the fence right now. God, I love your word. He said, I shall supply. But this is the thing. We want to choose where it comes from. And because it's not coming from the source that you wanted it to come from, because I wanted it to come from my husband, but it didn't come from my husband. But the Lord said, either way, what I need you to understand and what I need you to get is that I'm going to supply it from the heavenly treasure chest. Woo. I love God and all his children from my heavenly treasure chest. I will supply 
all of your needs according to my God. Come on. The riches and glory from heaven. Mm, mm, mm. My God. Let me help. Let me tell you when you are on assignment. The general watches after the soldiers and he makes sure, God, I love your word, that they have everything that they need. Because not only did I have one call, I had another call. This other call said, Pastor, are you okay? Because I seen you in a vision. And they described what I was going through. God, I love your word on today. See, sometimes we forget that God knows our address because circumstances and the situation it is city i'm not at it city because the situation is it feels overwhelming yeah hmm. it feels overwhelming and i'm not going to be able but mara the lord done set a whole situation together a transportation situation together in south carolina baby he done rearranged he done put it on somebody's mind he done made sure the finances got where they needed to get in order for you just to get back and forth to work now you know that's god Come on. See, when he said, I shall, because he wants you to learn if you learn how to depend on. And then you are seeking in the dark. Sometimes you have to seek God in the dark. God, I love your word. And that is where I was. I was like, God, I'm in the dark. I don't see any light. God, I love your word. It's not making sense to me, God. Got more problems than I got solutions. Somebody got somebody got more bills than they got money. God, I love your word on today. So you got to still seek him in the dark. Don't. This is what I can't. I promise you. It's one thing about me. I can't lose my seek. God, I'm still looking for you. And I am still listening. For your voice. Now, I don't know where and how you're going to show up, but God, I'm counting on you. I'm desperate. And I am counting on you. And the Lord said, teach your way through. And as I sat here this morning, I was reminded of The message I preached a little while back, maybe maybe last week, I think it was called, Don't Die in the Process. Yeah, don't die. Don't get weary and well-doing. And even if you get weary, don't faint. Hey, my God, come on, hold tight. Even if you are holding on by a thread, let it be the, the hem of his garment. Let it be the hem of his garment. God, I'm holding on by a thread. I, I don't really know. I'm on the brink. It is city. I'm the city. city. Baby, I'm trying to tell you, even though I did not like it, Paul said, no, David said, it was good that I was afflicted. Yeah, I had to go through that. Because there was something being birthed. Yeah, that ain't said it. I'm not that ain't said it. There was something being birthed that would no other situation, that particular amount of pressure had to be applied in that area for me to birth out this next level. Oh, I thank God. Because after you have suffered a little while. But God of all grace, he is faithful to restore, replenish, support, establish you, place you on a firm foundation. That's First Peter 5 and 10. Yeah. God, I love your word on today. It's a breaking. Anxiety, it's a, it's a shaking. Come on, but but Philippians 4 and 6 says, worry about nothing. It's the best anxiety medicine I ever heard of. Philippians 4 and 6, worry about nothing. Pray about everything and enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. 
We have to learn how to go to God. Worship our way through. Press in. Seek. Listen. Baby, my ear is like this to heaven. I'm like, what, God? Use whatever you're saying. Come on. See, because sometimes he'll give you a dream. Sometimes he will give you a vision. God, I love your word on today. Sometimes he'll put it in your spirit. Sometimes he'll remove uh, his peace uh, so you know that that's, this is no longer what I want you to do. Sometimes he'll remove his peace because I'm trying to take you to another level and you're too comfortable. Put people in my path. That's our word on today. Put people in my path. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. Put people in my path. I love God. 1 Samuel 20. Five. First Samuel 25. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. God, I love your word. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to um First Samuel 25 verse. Well, let me let me give you a little backstory and then we'll start. So what happened is David, there was a married couple. Let me start there. Um, Name uh, Nabal and Abigail. OK, verse three says this man's name was Nabal and his wife, Abigail. Abigail was a sensible and beautiful woman, but Nabal, a descendant of Caleb, was a cruel was cruel and mean in all his dealings so he was excuse me he was ignorant he was foolish all right so there david king david comes and he helps nabal for a season protecting all of his animals and all this stuff he comes he helps them and he brings all his men and they come and they help nabal and and they was there and, and nothing bad happened on their watch and so on and so forth so once David goes back to where he was, he sent a messenger to Nabal asking for help because I've been there for you. So I'm just asking if you can be there for me. Okay. Verse uh, 14 says, um, so wait a minute before we say that. So Nabal sends a word back to David like, I ain't about to help you. Now David doesn't got offended. Cause now you now you acting ignorant. I done came wasting my time, my money, my men. We done came and did all this for you, and we just asking for a little bit of food, and you ain't willing to share. Mm, mm, mm. My God. God, I love your word. Oh, Jesus. So verse 14. Meanwhile, one of Nabal's servants went to Abigail and told her, David sent a messenger from the wilderness to greet our master. But he screamed insults at them. These men have been very good to us. We never suffered any harm from them. <clears throat> Nothing was stolen from us the whole time they was here with us. In fact, day and night. They were like a wall of protection to us and the sheep. Okay. You need to know this and figure out what to do. For there is going to be trouble for our master and his whole family. He is so ill-tempered that no one can talk to him. See, the servants was like, you know what? He, they went to the wife. They was like, we can't even talk to him because he's ignorant. We about to be in some trouble because your husband's ignorant. Okay. So we need you to do something. Now, I love Abigail. Abigail is my favorite Bible girl because she, she ain't play no games. Now, <clears throat> Verse 18, Abigail wasted no time. She quickly gathered 200 loaves of bread, two wine skins full of wine, five sheep and had <clears throat> that had been slaughtered 
nearly a bushel of roasted grain, a hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred fig cakes. She packed them on donkeys and said to her servants, go ahead, I will follow you shortly. <clears throat> but she didn't tell Nabal, her husband, what she was doing. As she was riding her donkey into the mountain ravine. So now she done jumped into action. Okay, see that's why you can't just be pretty. Girl, if you just pretty, you ain't no enough. Come on, you got to be purposeful. God, I love your word on today. She jumped into action. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're just good. <laughs> My God, she jumped into action. Mm, mm, mm. God, I love your word on today. She gathered everything she needed. Come on. And she got moving. She didn't even tell her husband. I don't even have time to talk to him about this right now. I just got to go ahead and jump into action. She was riding her donkey into the mountain ravine. She saw David and his men coming towards her. David had just been saying a lot of good. It did to help this fellow. We protected his flock in the wilderness and nothing he owned was lost or stolen. But he has repaid me evil for good. This is what David said. May God strike me and kill me if even one of his household is still alive in the morning. Listen, David was like, oh my mama. David was like, you got me messed up. I've been good to him. Come on, you got me messed up. Oh, I'm, about to, I'm about to turn all this up. Come on. Hey, people done did it before. You think I, I done been good to him and he going to cheat? I'm about to go bleach all his clothes, catch the house on fire. Come on, people just, just go, they go out there because I, be, because I did right. I, because I risked myself. Because I put myself out there on a limb. Put people in my path. That's our word on today. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> right. Come on. See, we, David said, may God strike me and even kill me if one of, if, if even one man of his household is still alive in the morning. He said, I'm going to turn up all of that. Woo, Jesus. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed low before him. First of all, did y'all read the amount of food that she had to gather? So what I'm seeing in my mind when I see it, boy, when I love this story, I just, it, I could make a whole movie of this. When I see this story, so she doesn't have to, cause she wasn't, she couldn't go to the grocery store. It wasn't like she was just at Kroger's and, you know, and it was well-conditioned aisle, air-conditioned building, and she pushed her buggy. No, baby, she had to gather all of this. So why she's having to gather all these things, to me, it was either very dark when she went, it was either late in the night, or maybe she gathered all through the night and it was early morning. But in my mind, it was like a little bit of darkness outside, like a little dust. Either the sun was getting ready to rise or the sun had just went down. That's just in my, they don't, they don't say it in the Bible. It's just how I see it in my mind. So she done, her husband don't even know she's gone. Her husband don't even know she's gathered all these things. And she just a little old woman. Oh God, I love your word. You are good to me. Mm, mm, mm. just a little old woman god i love your word on today see i told god yesterday i said god you know all you got to do is talk to me through your word if i find it in your word i'm I'm with you i'm in it but i can't i don't care because people god i love your word come on people i don't want to hear culture i don't want to hear what your mama did and what your grandma did if it ain't bible i can't run it i can't live it because it don't make sense it does not compute and so I said, God, it's weird to me that women are having to cover men. It does not make sense. But as I read this, she had to cover her man. Woo! She had to cover who was supposed to cover her. God, I love your word. Just one little woman. See, God, I, God been using women. Y'all better not let these people tell y'all you ain't called. God has been using women. When her husband was out of position, God been using women to cover these ignorant men. Now, all men are ignorant. I'm not saying that, but some are. This is, I'm just reading the word. That's all we doing is reading the word. God, I love your word. Sonia, I'm going to get with you after the laugh. 
I need us to understand this is this is Bible. When when Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed low before him. She fell <clears throat> at his feet and said, I accept all blame in this matter, my Lord. Please listen to what I have to say. I know Nabal is a wicked and ill-tempered man. Please <clears throat> don't pay any attention to him. He is a fool. Just as his name suggests. But... I never saw, I never even saw the young men you sent. So she takes responsibility. Even though it was not her, God, I love your word. Even though she didn't do it, my God, she, she had to jump into action. She had to use the wisdom that God gave her. See, can you be sent? Yeah, they sit down, no, that ain't sitting. My God, come on, baby, don't you let them tell you. Listen, as I was just listening to God this morning, and he began to show me, these people with this religious spirit will tell you that you can't be used. The first person that was spoken to after the Lord was risen was a woman. My God, come on, now let's talk about Elizabeth. God, I love your word. The word did not go to Zechariah that they were going to have a child. He spoke, my God, to Elizabeth first. Then the word came to Zechariah. Wait a minute. Let's talk about uh, Samson's mother and father. The word came to Samson's mother before it came to Samson's father. I'm just trying to help somebody on today. The word came to Mary before it came to Joseph. God, I love your word on today. God has been using women. She had to cover her household, because she had wisdom. She had endurance. She had strength. She had stamina that the Lord had given her. The Lord knew that she married a fool. God, I love your word. The Lord knew that she married a fool. But he said, I got you, daughter. I'm going to repay you for everything that you are going through behind closed doors. God, I love your word on today. Listen, verse 26. This this the part that blessed me because Abigail knew how to talk to the man of God. <laughs> I love this story. Now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, since the Lord has kept you from murdering and taking vengeance to your own hands, let all your enemies and those who try to harm you be as cursed as Nabal. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He didn't even say he was not going to kill her husband and all the things. He, she done told him what he's about to do. God, I love your word, baby. You better know how to speak to the spirit of your husband. You better know how to speak to the spirit of your son. Don't let these people tell you that a, a woman can't do none of those things. Because it is not I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Yeah, that said it. I'm not that it said it. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. God, I love your word. She done told this man, you ain't about to kill him. You ain't about to kill him. And I thank God for keeping you for not killing him. He ain't said he was not. He didn't. He probably still had his sword. Wait a minute. Because in my mind, David had all his men, all his men that was with him. Let me, let me give you some. Let me, let's go back. Verse 12. So David's young men returned and told him what Nabal said. Get your swords was what David replied. Get your swords was David's reply as he strapped on his own. Then 400 men started off with David and 200 remained behind to guard the equipment. So baby, it was little bitty Abigail on a donkey and 400 men with David leading them. I don't love them with swords. You can just hear it. God, I love your word. You can just hear the pitter pat. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 of the feet of them horses. Baby, you can just feel, you know, when a man get mad, testosterone was just all in the earth. They was, and then David was talking to himself. Come on, David done hollered, oh, my mama. If, if, if one of them is alive by the morning time, it's going, no, that ain't how this thing. You're not going to disrespect me. 
And then here comes little bitty Abigail on her little donkey. She ain't have no sword. God, I love your word. She ain't have no mace. God, I love your word. She ain't have no gun. God, I love your word. But she had the spirit of God. She ain't speaking no tongues. God, I love your word. She didn't have to seduce him. God, I love your word. But she did what her spirit man rose up and told her to do. And here is a present that your servant that I, your servant, have brought you and your young men. Verse 28, please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. The Lord will surely reward you with a lasting dynasty for you are fighting. They say the Lord's battle. You have not done wrong throughout your entire life. She knew how to speak to that man. Woo! I love this story, y'all. I hope, I hope it's blessing you. I love this story. See, it's good to know how to cook good and it's good to look good. God, I love your work. Sex is good. All of those things. But if you ever learn how to talk to his spirit, <laughs> if you ever learn how to talk to the spirit of a man, now we got action. <laughs> you ain't got to manipulate him. You ain't got to manipulate dip them. Come on. You ain't got to do none of the. If you ever learn how to talk to the spirit of a man, you can spend less money on hair weaves and clothes. And you won't have to go out and get a new body shape. You won't have to spend all of that money on plastic surgery. God, I love your word on today. The Lord will surely reward you with the lasting dynasty for you are fighting the Lord's battle and you have not done wrong throughout your entire life. Even when you are chased by those who seek to kill you, your life is safe in the care of the Lord, your God, secure in his treasure pouch. God, I love your word on today. My God, but the lives of your enemies will disappear like stones shot from a sling. When the Lord has done all he promised and has made you the leader of Israel, don't let this be a blemish on your record. Put people in my path, God, that know how to talk me down when my emotions get high. That know how to talk me down, God, I love your word, when I get offended. That, that know how to talk me down, God, I love your word. Come on, when I'm caught up, she said, don't let it be a blemish on your record. Woo! Don't do it. <laughs> hey, I know it sounds good. I know it might feel good to cuss that person out. God, I love your word. I know if he been cheating, you think it's a good idea to cheat. <laughs> yeah. But don't let this be a blemish on your record. Mm, mm, mm. That blessed me. Come on. She knew how to talk to him. Then your conscience won't have to bear the staggering burden of needless bloodshed and vengeance. And when the Lord has done these great things for you, please remember me, your servant. Woo! She said, just remember this day. That's all I'm asking. God, I love your word on today. David replied to Abigail, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you to meet me today. See, one thing, I love David. David, I, David be blessing me. Come on. He be blessing me. God, I love your word on today. Come on. David, he, 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 he knew how to, to listen to people, but hear God. He knew how to see the situation, but find God. Come on. See, I, the, the situation looked crazy, but I still, I can still understand that even in this, it is still the texture of God. Put people in my path. God, I love your word on today. You're good, God. Hmm. I remember when I was in Florida and at this time, I 
I was either right, I was either very shortly after this moment delivered from homosexuality, or I might have started the process. I can't remember. But I remember being broke. That's what I remember. I remember being broke because the Lord told me to give away everything, move down here. And I remember being broke. I had like five dollars to my name. And I was like, shoot. I was like, I should just strip. I should just go to the strip because I can make me a pretty little mask. And I should just strip or just a little bit. Just a little bit. My friend came in and she said, really? That's what you're going to do? She said, God has delivered you. Put people in my path. God has delivered you from so much. And you want to go down here. And what she said, what's your name going to be? The Sunday school teacher? God, I love your word. Come on. She said, so you want to go and get yourself in a situation that you're going to have to take 5, 10, 15 more years of God having to wash you from one night of foolishness. And you don't know if you're going to make it out. Put people that will tell me the truth in my path. The thought left my mind just as quick as it came. Come on. See, I'm trying to help us. It matters who are around you. That's why the Bible says the godly do not seek counsel from the ungodly. You can't, you cannot get counsel from the ungodly. Cause if I had an ungodly friend, they'd be like, girl, exactly. That's all you gotta do. Girl, you can just make you a cute little mask. Girl, that thing that's cute. Make it match your lingerie, girl. And you know, you can just do so and so, so and so, girl. I mean, God, got, God know your heart. Okay. And so it'll be all right. Have to be careful. Who's in your ear when you're in distress? got to be careful let me see the fruit on your tree before i let you speak over my life come on so so in this season me and my husband have been seeking out marriage counsel and and when i found the text i said oh now that's now that i want that couple to counsel us because it's real oil God, I love your word. They've been married 30 years and he's gentle and kind to his wife and she can be who she is and he can be who he is and he's a man of God and he's a hardworking man and he's, he keeps his ear to heaven. Now that is the oil yeah, that I want to sit under. God, I love your word on today. I can't go sit under somebody's marriage. Come on, who, who's 10 current crazy? Come on. Now listen, God will give wisdom because no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright and diligently seek him. But God puts people in our path on purpose. Who has God put in your path that you're overlooking? That you don't want to be honest with. Because see, I had to just get honest. Because they asked me to come to their church and preach. So after I came to their church and preach, I said, but I know what y'all asked me to do. But now I'm asking y'all to do something. God, I love your word on today. And I thank God for it. See, in this season, we're going to keep talking about that you have to get honest. Because there is no deliverance without truth. So through our honesty, the door is now open for deliverance. But we're so busy, don't want to tell nobody our business. We so secretive, not me, but people are so secretive. God, I love your word on today. They're so secretive. Everything, but the thing about it is the very thing you think you had and we can see it on your face. Come on, your hair is falling out. You're either gaining weight or losing weight. God, I love your word. Come on, we can see it. So even if you, your behavior shows, your attitude shows it, come on, we still can see it. So the very thing you think you're hiding is still showing. Come on. Come on. Listen, we have to get on this so that we can get free. And when we sat down with this couple yesterday, we had a very great breakthrough. Hmm. We had a very great breakthrough, but it would not have came if I was so busy being a woman of God that I don't want to tell nobody that my marriage is jacked up. No, I said, hey, help, my marriage is jacked up. And yes, I still love God. And yes, I pray. And yes, I trust God. And yes, I'm all in. And whatever God says, I'm going to do it. But my marriage is jacked up. Because I was willing 
to get honest, to expose what was behind the curtain. Because, see, first of all, I just can't live no lie. That just that ain't good for me. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not comfortable living a lie. And so it was the it was the catalyst for breakthrough. And I thank God because it shifted the direction of my marriage. I hope I'm helping somebody today. I hope I'm helping somebody today get free enough to get honest with somebody and say, this is what I'm going through. And then be open to sound counsel. God, I love your word. And then be open to the Holy Ghost dealing with you about a thing. I can't, we can no longer sweep it under a rug because dirt under a rug is still dirt. I don't care how pretty the rug is. And I don't care how expensive the rug is. I'm going to live a real life. I don't want a pretty house and a big ring and a beautiful Facebook picture. And a flyer. I don't want any of those things without real substance. And you cannot get the real substance without getting real honest. God, I love your word on today. You're holy. Hmm. David then replied back to Abigail. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you to meet me today. God has sent people into your life to meet you right where you are. God, I love your word. God has sent people in your life that you can be honest with. People say, well, why you tell your whole story? People gonna talk about you. Girl, they gonna talk about you anyway. They gonna talk about you anyway, man. Of God, that's normal. People talk. And what I realized is people that got a so, whole lot of time to talk about my business, their business definitely jacked up because that means you ain't even working on it. If you got time to talk about my business, you don't even have, you ain't even started on your work, okay? It does, I'm not worried about who's gonna see my business and who's not gonna see my business because just like I showed you the ugly, baby, you gonna see the good. <laughs> you gonna see the holy, my God. You gonna see the love. The marriage is gonna be on 10. Come on, because God said said it because God said it. God, I love your word on today because God said it's going to be. God, I love your word. See, you have to end those moments. You have to go back. You have to go back, God, I love your word, to the promise. And I get it when, when John the Baptist was in the cell and he said, uh, he said, he said, are you the one I shall I search for another? He said, are you the one? And Jesus said it this way, the blind see, the lame walk and the poor are getting healed. My God, come on. See, sometimes I'm like, God, this ain't lining up with what I know about you. Hey. But just because it hurts, it does not mean that it's not God. The promise over my life is that my husband going to love me. Kind, wonderful, gentle, amazing. I'm going to be good to him. He going to be good to me. I'm going to be good to him. He going to be real good to me. Come on. And so this is the promise. And so when it does not look like what God said, what do I have to do? I got to go back to the manufacturer and say, God, this ain't it. So what is, are my instructions? Sometimes we make it too spiritual that we forget that there is still natural. We forget that it's still natural. God, I love your word on today. And so we, we, we have to be honest. I'm not, I, I'm not going to uh, be able to continue hmm, to continue in falsehood. And so when we get honest, now we can get action. After the honesty comes the action. Hmm. Come on. I love God and all his children. See, David replied to Abigail, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you to meet me today. Thank God for your good sense. Bless you for keeping me from murder and carrying out vengeance with my own hands. For I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept me from hurting you. Come on. He said, baby, when you rolled up, I was still mad. Hey, when you rolled up, I was still mad. Hey. 
I was still in my feelings and you belong to him. So that means, because I said not one member of his household was going to be alive. But I thank God for holding me long enough to hear you. God, I love your word on today. I thank God for holding me long enough. City, I'm not on it, city. To hear you, God sent you on assignment. Hmm. And I thank God for your good sense. That's what he told her. Because your husband, he's ignorant. But I thank God for your good sense. Hmm. See, somebody, somebody yesterday on the live, they were talking about being unequally yoked. A lot of that's not actually Bible. It is Bible. Let me not say that. It is Bible. The Bible does say that. But a lot of relationships are more unbalanced than not unbalanced. And you know, I heard the Lord say this uh, a, about two weeks ago. He said, tell Abigail, David is watching. Tell Abigail, David is watching. What does that mean? That means that, that the woman who's married to a fool. Come on. It's somebody who's been in their presence, the husband and the wife, and the Lord is getting ready to shift. Prayerfully, see, people don't like divorce, but I'd rather you get divorced than your life to be taken. The Lord don't, because Nabal's life was taken because he mishandled David. And then David said, you know what? He swooped in and said, I'm about to get her. I'm about to get that one right there because she, she wasn't appreciated by the one she had. Come on. And since she wasn't appreciated by the one she had, hey, baby girl, go get her for me. Come on, because I'm going to treat you right. Because you spoke to my spirit, man. God, I love your word. Verse 33. Thank God for your good sense. Bless you for keeping me from murder and from carrying out vengeance with my own hands. For I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept me from hurting you, that if you had not hurried to meet me, God, I love your word, not one of Nabal's men would still be alive tomorrow. See, time is of the essence. And it, this is why I love God for delivering me from vanity because I was so caught up. Baby, I would not have been able to do no 7 a.m. morning broadcast, no 8 a.m. morning because it used to take me four hours to get dressed every day. Hair, makeup, reshape your body with all of these things. Do all of this stuff. Wait a minute. Time is of the essence. God, I love your word. Time is of the essence. What is unnecessarily eating away at your time in this season? Because David said, I'm so glad you hurried up. God, I love your word on today. I listen to heaven about everything that God is doing in me. Because first of all, I got to give an account to God. I can't, I don't got to give no account to people. I have to give an account to God. So I stayed, uh, I, I was out of town for my husband for about a month. And then the Lord said, come home. Because time is of the essence. The time is now. No, you can't go early because pride is still in them. God, I love your word. My God, come on. You have to get to a place where you have learned the timing of God. And don't let anybody push you. And don't let anybody hold you. I have to, because I've learned God. Hey. I learned God. Come on. But see, the thing that, I, that the Lord also taught me was this. When people don't do right, you know what God did? He removed his presence. So I had to remove my presence for a moment so that you could see that, oh, I'm a good thing. Come on. Because I'm intentionally a good thing. God, I love your word. Come on. And that doesn't mean that he's not a good man. He just has some brokenness that he had not come face to face with. He had not gotten honest with. God, I love your word on today, but God sent me. Come on. See, when you allow the Lord to send you, sometimes he sends you to a relationship. You're not always sent to a pulpit. God, I love your word. You're not always sent, my God, come on, to a platform. You might be sent to a school. But this is the thing. I hear a lot of people and they feel like they're being sent to heal broken people, but you still broke. Now that's the problem. You're, you're accepting the assignment, but you have not accepted the personal instruction. See, I eat this scroll for myself first. I ate the scroll for myself first. Hey, it is. City, I'm not at it. City, I'm not at it. City.
God, I love your word. I don't believe that God is sending you to a broken person while you're still broken. I even told my husband when I came, I said, baby, I don't come broke. Because I was intentional in my single season about healing and about deliverance. I didn't want to bring my husband a bag of broken pieces. And that's okay if that's how it happens because God did that. He did that in many cases. And see, this is a prime example. I talk about Hosea and Gomer a lot. And how I believe that the if Gomer, the let me for those of you who don't know, Hosea was a prophet and Gomer was a prostitute. And the Lord told him to marry a prostitute. He said, man of God, who is a whole man of God, go marry a broken woman. God, I love your word. Through the relationship, she was saved. Come on. She submitted her will to God. God, I love your word. She stopped prostituting and she was a good wife. God, I love your word on today. But I told this and I thank God because he just gave me this revelation. Um, Let me keep reading. For I swear by, verse 34, I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept me from hurting you, if that if you had not hurried out to meet me, that not one of Nabal's men would still be alive tomorrow morning. Then David accepted her present and told her, return home in peace. I have heard what you said, and we will not kill your husband. God, I love your word. She had to cover who was supposed to cover her. <laughs> When Abigail arrived home, she found that Nabal was throwing a big party and was celebrating like a king. He was very drunk. So she didn't tell him anything about her meeting with David until the next day. In the morning when Nabal was sober, his wife told him what had happened. And as a result, it is, it is, it is, it is. see, she didn't have to put, she didn't have to shed no blood neither. As a result, he had a stroke. See, you got to be careful. As a result, he had a stroke and he lay paralyzed on his bed like a stone. About 10 days later, the Lord struck him and he died. I believe in them 10 days, God allowed his whole life to sh for him to show all the ignorant things you did, all the times you made that woman cry, all the times you done acted ignorant against the people of God, all the times you done showed up and showed out too crazy. Oh, I believe that in them 10 days, that he was fully aware of every silly thing that he did and then he died see the bible talks about in genesis when a husband is evil the lord takes his life that's the bible okay and so this is the thing i'd rather you take his wife than take his life because truly when a husband has a good wife if you take the wife you've taken the life because two have become one flesh god i love your word on today and a good wife god i love your word the bible says only a only the lord can give a good wife and if you take a good wife my god come on he'll be like um what's that one uh uh abel uh cain who just wandered in the land of nod he just you're never quiet you better ask my children's father he never still ain't come on he still ain't come on see i'm trying to help somebody on today and so because the lord put him with a sensible woman but he did not yield he did not listen the lord allowed that relationship to be a vehicle for salvation but because he did not listen the lord took his life because i won't let you break her down that's what you won't do hey when david heard that nabal was dead he said praise the lord who has avenged the insults I received from Nabal and has kept me from doing it myself. Nabal has received the punishment for his sin. See, you got to, this is why when people do crazy stuff to me, I just say, Lord, have mercy on them. Cause oh, you can't, when he said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. When you make a child of God cry instead of cussing you out. Ooh, baby, my tears, if my tears got to start flowing, now we got action. And it's not because I'm so great to say you have the same thing if you've paid the price. The Bible begins to speak of how different people found favor with God and were precious to God. You don't get to damage those who are precious to God without repayment. Now, oh, David was, hey, David was a man after God's own heart. The ball fooled with the wrong one on the wrong day. And the Lord took his life.
Then David sent messenger to Abigail to ask her to be his wife. <laughs> it's just Bible, y'all. So I don't know who needed to hear that bit of encouragement on today. But our word is put people in my path. God, I love your word. The Lord allowed Abigail to be at the right place, at the right time, speaking the right words. Come on. Speaking the right words. God, I love your word on today. At the right time, in the right pace, at the right speed. Because <laughs> words heal. We talk a lot about how word curses and, and verbal abuse, and that's a real thing. But we also have verbal healing. Mm. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. God, I love your word on today. Lord, we thank you because you're good. We plead the blood over every person's mind today. Who is in oppressing God? Keep them. Hold them. Oh, God. For your word says you're close to the brokenhearted. You're close. You did not say that our hearts would never get broken, but you are close. He's close. He's close. Hmm. He's close. Words are not always to break. Words are also to heal. He said, I sent my word and healed. This is why kind words are so important. And, and it, to me, it's, it's interesting. I thank God for what he has done in me. And I'm not bragging on myself. It's just, I think, I really thank God for, he has really given me a loving heart. And he has really given me a forgiving heart. And so when people run into me who, ha who have been hung around people who don't love right and who don't forgive right um, and who hold grudges, then they find it weird when I say, no, I still love you. You still love me after I did that? Yeah, I still love you and I still forgive you. Come on. But but it's 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 the way of God. Love keeps no record of wrongdoing, but love don't keep doing you wrong, okay? And so that is where we are in this season. We're in a season where we have to, the love of God has to be reestablished. We all have pain. We all have letdown, disappointment, rejection, abuse, abandonment, different situations we've encountered. We all have. Everybody that you run across has a reason to be nasty, to be rude, to be ignorant, to be crazy. Everybody has a reason to be this way. But you also, but, but let me say it this way, but you don't have the right to be. If you say you're a child of God, you don't have the right to be nasty and rude and bitter and, and double-minded and one moment you're this and one moment you're that one moment you're hot and one moment you're cold hmm. yeah it's so true and we and, and when we do forgive and get over it and go forward that's bible forgetting those things that are behind you pressing forward to the mark of the high calling you have to because if you don't you'll miss the downloads and know that every situation when i tell you i thank god for this hiccup that me and my husband have had because i have it would if it would have just still been sunshine and rainbows from sun to some up to down and from always seven months we've been married I would have missed this whole teaching that the Lord taught me through that process. Keep your ear to heaven. See, there are some situations nobody can pray you out of. And you can't even fast your way out of. The three Hebrew boys' mothers could have fasted, prayed. They could have sold six, $16 million seeds. They could have done all of that. But no matter what, their sons still had to go in. Their son still had to go into the fiery furnace. Hmm. 
I still had to go in. The Bible says it bruised the father to crush the son. Some seasons he, he is, it, I mean, it, I'm sorry. Uh, the Bible says it pleased the father to crush the son. And so some seasons there's going to be a crushing that pleases God in your life. That, that pleases God. It hurts, but because of the results that are going to come through. And he knows, he knew what he put in you. God, I love your word on today. And he knew what kind of circumstance and situation that it would need to bring it out of you. Hmm. Put people in my path. That's where we have to understand when God he uses people I think a lot of time we have gotten so spiritual that we don't think we need people oh I just you know I only hear from God and it's so much we using God as a blanket we using God as a shield and I'm not talking the wrong way you need people everybody needs people if God did not want people to be a part of your journey guess what he would not have wrapped his son in flesh and put him in a person's body and brought him here to earth, sent him to earth, okay? You need people, okay? You need people. Let me say it because somebody still thinks they don't. You need people, but, and that's exactly, but the right type of people, the change, yes, there are transitions. Bad company corrupts good character, Character. So that is, no, you can't, we're not saying being around the wrong people, but you need people. Okay. That, but you, they're going to make you uncomfortable. If you, if you see a lot of times we can't grow because we don't want the right people. We want the wrong people. We want the people that we've been in friendship with for 15 years who still have no fruit. They have not advanced. God, I love your work. They have not grown in Christ. They have not grown in their relationships. They have not grown in their financial status. God, I love your word. Come on. No, that's why God created spiritual family. That is why he said, who is your mother? Who is your brother? Only those who do the will. Only those who do the will of the one, but they will challenge you. Because they will, they will correct, they will rebuke. So you have to be up for the challenge. They're not going to let you just stay where you are. Come on. And sometimes it's not what they say, it's just how they live challenges you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God, I love your word. See, I've learned that the honesty that God has put in me, it makes people uncomfortable because they're comfortable living. Oh, you know, we just don't really say that to her because she just do the most. No, we're going to still say it. And if she do the most, that's between her and her. But if we don't tell her, she's going to continue to do the most. And he is going to no longer are we going to accept any old kinds of things from people that call themselves people of God. No, I'm not. I'm not going to accept any old thing from people who call themselves family. No, we're not. We don't because you don't have to. You don't, you don't have to. That is why God created spiritual family. That's why he created spiritual mothers, spiritual fathers, and spiritual sisters and brothers and cousins. Come on. Because now we, we have to have a safe place. We have to have a safe place where we are on one accord and we can feel the love of God flow from breast to breast and heart to heart. God, I love your word. Be mindful to continue to learn through every situation. Something that I've learned that because I've been married, this is my fourth marriage and um, something that two of the two of the, the marriages, um, the mothers have said is, you know, we've been praying for our husband, our son's a good wife. I'm not going to pray for my son, a good wife. I'm going to pray that my son is a good husband because I've been the good wife, but where is the good man? Come on. And not only a good man, because the Bible says a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. So women, I want us to change our prayer life when it comes, because if our sons are not prepared, they're going to almost kill the woman of God. 
in the spirit. I'm not talking about physically. That's a whole nother thing. But I'm talking about we've got to change it because it really now Abigail did cover her husband, but that's not God's design. Because see, there was something on the inside of Abigail that she knew how to cover him, but not control him. God, I love your word. But see, there's something in Jezebel that she covered Ahab, but she also controlled him. Okay. See, it was something on the inside. And so you don't know if you only have a, a good woman, because Jezebel was still a good woman. She knew how to take control. She knew how to take orders. She just had a weak man. And if she had the right man in her life, no, first of all, you, we're not doing that, Jezebel. We ain't doing all of that. That's not what we're about to do. We don't do that in this house. We don't serve. I'm the man and we serve. We don't serve Baal in this house. And if you want to be my wife, this is who we serve. We serve the king of kings. We serve the Lord of lords. Come on. See, we cannot leave our sons vulnerable because we want a woman to come alongside and bring them wholeness. No, we have to pray for our sons that they come into Christ in full measure and that they are a, a godly husband. And that they are ready for marriage. And that they are whole. And then we have to take accountability in what we have shown them. Me and my sister were talking this morning. And she said, these men are just so jacked up. They mamas have jacked them up. And they mamas don't want to take no credit. She said, I'm trying my best not to jack my son up. Not to be overly harsh. Not to make him feel like he's the man of the house at seven. He's not the man of the house. He is still a boy. We put too much, but we put too much pressure on our sons to be our husbands. And then they can't have a wife because you, because you the wife. I love God and all his children. You think you, you don't come before the wife, but you think that you are the wife because we put our sons in those positions, they are not the man of the house. There's a book called Father by God. And me and my son began to read that book together. And he began to weep about the second or third chapter. He began to weep because it was just like, my God, there was this part that the man was saying in the book. He was saying that his mother, he was, I think he was raised by a single mother. And he was saying how the son has to have a, a boy stage. He was talking about a cowboy stage. I don't remember what I think it was like the wow stage. And then the man stage, it was a couple of stages. But he said, when you tell a son that you are the man of the house, you have made him skip all of his steps. And step into a position that even grown men are folding under. It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. Mm, mm, mm. Some women are Jezebels over their sons. You're too harsh. You're too controlling. You have to let them wiggle. That's why my son is not with me right now. Because I'm letting them wiggle. I'm just loving and I'm supporting him from the sideline. That would not be my choice, but I'm not going to force my way because you as a young man have to test out what you think. You have to try the spirit to see if it is of God. And I can't keep cleaning up all your messes. I'm not your cleanup woman. I'm your mama and I'm going to pray for you, but I cannot clean up all your messes. Because I'm making you a boy in a man's body. Talking about the grown ones. Stop bailing them out of jail. Stop paying their child support. Come on. Stop babysitting the kids because they don't want to babysit their own kids. Them are their kids. If you want to babysit and it's not interrupting you and you're spending time with your grandkids. Yes, if they're, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about the ones over 18 or 22-ish because 18 ain't grown. Uh, but I, if you want to do that, good. But don't let it interrupt your whole life that you're rerouting your life to accommodate the mess of your son. I don't know who I'm helping on today, but we need to talk about this. We have to talk about this because they become someone's heartache, headache, or someone's blessing. And the man is the head. And we have too many men leading from behind. So it puts the woman in position to now, how do I lead but not control? And that was never our place. 
So now it, it creates, I don't even, it creates, I don't even know who Jesus, come on. We have too many men that want to lead spiritually from behind. And I don't know how, I'm looking back, I'm trying to figure out how we walk before. Well, I don't know which way we go next. God, I love your word on today. See, I'm, I'm talking to somebody so that we can get this right. Put people in my path. Put a man in his path, God. That lets him see the right way, the righteous way. That lets him see the righteous way, not the overbearing way. Come on. I thank God for, let me see, uh, um, Rudolph Mason. I thank God for um, Kenneth Bailey. Um, I thank God for Zach Taylor. Um, because they there is a texture to the way they love their wives. And I understand that they have not learned that through culture. They've had to learn. It was something on the inside of them that groomed them. Or maybe someone came along and spoke life to them. But we have to stop pacifying. No, I will never. I said to sit down and counsel with a husband and a wife. I'm never going to be easy on the man. And it's not because I'm resentful or anything like that. No, you're called to lead the family. But because we keep sugarcoating it and we keep telling these boys, the men, oh, you know, we keep telling the wife, you just need to just do, just love them, pray for them, love, lay hands on them. No, tell the man you need to step up. This is your responsibility. The Bible says love your wife like Christ loves the church. Love her like you love your own body. We have some men out here who will take better care of their cars than they do they brag. Come on. So I want us to see we've got to, as, as women, when you're raising a man, if you're a single woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, she, she, she was told to her, the Proverbs 31 was a mother talking to her son about what first she talked to him. Come on. I love God and all his children. The Bible will back you up every time. Proverbs 31 verse one through 10. The mother first told him about his character. This what you, this is what kind of man you need to be. Then he, then she told him about what kind of woman to look for. Come on. We're telling them to what kind of woman to look for, but we ain't talking to them about their character. I don't sugarcoat when I counsel. Because we can't get free. We cannot get free. I'm not going to sugarcoat. Come on. Because it's the truth that sets us free. We're going to go line upon line, precept upon precept. Marriage is holy. It is God's union. If you don't want to run it by God's way, then just stay shacking up. Cool. Because you ain't doing Because you're still lined up for hell. If you are saying that I, I'm 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 uh, getting married because the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn, I don't want to go to hell. But you're not in alignment. You're still lined up for hell. Come on, see we we've got to get this. We got to run it by God's way. So He's putting people in your path that will speak the truth and life and love, correction, rebuke, encouragement. Come on. He's putting people in your path. I thank him because he is good. No good thing. Will he withhold from those that diligently seek him and those that walk up right? We are in a season of honesty and whoever can't be honest, you're going to have to let them live fake by themselves because God is trying to free his people. No more fake church. No more anything that you say, well, we don't, we don't really say nothing about that. No, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. Well, we don't really, you know, well, she's not, you know, we just, no, you're dancing around. Jesus did not dance around. He called them what they was, your brood, your snake. Come on, your whitewashed tomb, you're full of dead men's bones. He did not dance around because it gave them an opportunity to come face to face with the truth. This is the truth. Now, what you going to do? Because you will not say that you didn't hear it. We will give an account on judgment day. Not only for the deeds done in the flesh, not only for the words spoken, not only for the gifts and talents that we did or did not use, not only for those things, but we will also give an account to the words that we heard that we did not adhere to. Hey. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. You're holy. You're holy. You're righteous. You're good. You're faithful. 
You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Mighty are the works of your hands. It's in you that we live, move, and have our being. Thank you for putting people in our path. Blood-bought people, fire-baptized people, people who have been baptized in the truth, people who have not only, they don't have the appearance of godliness, they have the power to live holy, tell the truth, walk in the ways of righteousness, unfailing love. You have a standard. You're unwavering. Love and holiness are your standards. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your enemy. Love your neighbor. Love is patient. It's kind. It's not rude. It's not easily angered. But love also corrects. The Bible says you don't love if you don't correct. God, I love your word. You're good. You're good, God. May this word walk with us. May we meditate on it throughout our day today. May we see the people you have put in our path as gifts from God, even when they challenge us to go to the next level. God, I love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Whoo! God is faithful. God is faithful. And may we honor those who God puts in our path. That's the other thing I want us to remember. To honor those who God puts in our path. To honor, to honor. The Bible says give honor where honor is due. To respect. Saul said, he said uh, whenever he was going to see Jesse. I mean, not Jesse. When he was going to see Samuel, the prophet. He said, I can't go see the prophet. I don't have nothing to give. He wanted to honor the man of God. See, he, he just, Samuel didn't have to uh, say, you know, you sow a $50 seed and sow a $100 seed and so we're in the $50 line. No, it was something in, God, in Saul's heart that responded. It was an honor culture that was in his heart. God, I love your word on today. Thank you, Lord. God is faithful. All right, people of God, be encouraged. Have a good, wonderful day um, on purpose. If you want to sow into the word today, our cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry. If you're watching on TikTok and you want to go back and watch the full message, you can catch it on our uh, YouTube channel, which is called Makeover, M-A-K-E-O-V-A -E ministry. You also can check out our website, which is just freshly up. Woo! It just launched yesterday. It's called makeoverministry.com. We're makeover ministry on all platforms. So you can catch us on all platforms. I do do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I do life coaching sessions. You can reach out to me. If you are interested in a life coach session, go to the, to the um, website. Go to the, um, after you link to the website, go to the life coach page. And you can click on which kind of session you would like. Whether you want an uh, individual session. I do couples counseling. I do group sessions if you want. Uh, whatever. You can go on there. You also can leave a message if you have any questions. So on and so forth. So feel free to reach out. Um, God is good, y'all. He is good. I also, those of you who are business owners, I do um, uh, business um I'm a visionary. And so if you have an idea, but you don't know how to grow it, what to do, come on, call me. I will actually go onto the site, book a vision. Um, oh, I can't think of what it's called. A vision something session. And um, we can sit down and talk about uh, how to how to expand and grow the gift of God in you. All right. All right, people of God, have a good day on purpose. Be encouraged. Know that if God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. Now, our message today on YouTube will be called Put People in My Path, Part 1. We're going to pick up tomorrow, y'all, because we ain't even get halfway through the lesson. We only got through the first scripture. It's so good. So join us tomorrow, same time, same place, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Apostle Julia of the Makeover Ministry and Makeover Transformation Church. Have a good day on purpose.